the heart of Yorkshire, our health service is hard at work. A dedicated team working around the clock in casualty. How much pain are you in? A lot. A lot. I'm starting to feel very relaxed as well. They're with us for our most vulnerable moments. Just be a little bit sore because it'll be bruised. I don't want to stay in hospital. Facing life and death. <laughs> trauma and tears. Am I to die? The honest answer is I don't know. Supporting each other through the toughest shifts. Oh, bless you. We're a little dying. This is Barnsley Casualty 24-7. Oh, what a day. My God, that's strong <laughs> On shift tonight, junior Dr Ashley Trimble. Will she be home for Emmerdale? Mm. I'm not sure if I'm being honest with you. Nurse Kate Ellis. So you need to keep that dry now for five days. We can get him back, we're just up to here. Junior Dr Dan Buick. <laughs> OK, stop now, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, fine. And volunteer Jane Allen. Michael Flatley. No, that's not you, you're not blonde, you're grey, sweetheart. I said Flatley. You get that, didn't you? So get ready to share a shift at Barnsley Casualty. Mm. It's not too good out there. That's a good job we've got an NHS service, isn't it? I can't find my patient, which is uh, the first start, isn't it? Um, no. I think we're not having a very good um, day. Hold on, we'll see if she's been moved somewhere. Overnight, freezing fog has descended across the whole of South Yorkshire. Is it snowing? Not quite yet. Oh. Um, it is. Is it? Is it? Really? Well, I'm just cool. hoping, with it being cold, murky, and you kind of can see, you know, you can see it's cold, you can see Everyone's it's icy. Inside. Everyone's going to be <laughs> stay inside or take extra precautions with yeah. bad weather. Outside Barnsley Casualty, it's minus three degrees. Oh, needs to stay inside. Oh, it's <laughs> inside, that means the whole department knows exactly what's in store for this particular shift. Slips, trips and falls. Have we had many in this morning, do you know? It's a beautiful day. It's just that it's a bit shady underfoot. You haven't seen that lady that was talking about with her? I don't know where she's gone. Will you pretty please just go to estates? These are the last of the passenger requests. So you basically want me to go outside in the cold. I'll get you, do you want me sleeping back cold? No. Risking being slipping and breaking one's neck. No, you're going to feel bad now, no. no. Give me a <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. You'll sleep now, I'll die. Give as if back. I would. As if I would. Do, sleep that. Do I ain't mind? I would just... Don't fall, please. The hub is heaving. The waiting room, 30 treatment bays and five resource areas are full of patients. Even the corridors are having to be used to fit in all the casualties of the icy weather. You don't know where this lady is. You're not even surprised. It says uh, corridor E. I'll try a uh, resource. Hold on. We'll get there. Dr Trimble at last tracks down her patient. Oh, this is Anne. <laughs> Hello, is it Anne? Ah, oh, we've been looking for you. I'm Ashley, I'm one of the doctors. What happened with you today? Uh, we to our colleagues and we were walking down to office to get changed and I've just gone across the ass and just slipped. Yeah. Put my arm out to stop me saying. OK. So they've run to get help, the full ambulance, Without with blankets to cover me up, because obviously I went on wet grass. I do quite relish when it's probably going to be a busy day from fractures and things. It means there might be quite a lot of like manipulations or having to put things back in place, which is um, something that's um, good for us to do as any doctors. The problem with this fracture is we're going to have to put it in a different kind of cast too, OK? We're going to have to make you a bit sleepy, I think, to do that, given with how much pain you're in, all right? So we'll probably move you to a different area and, and give you some pain relief. Won't be long and we'll get this fixed for you. Thank you. Bye. Help! Help! I've broke my leg. There is certain days that it's very, very 
There's, and you can tell there's a tension there in the air sometimes. I think you've got to have a certain amount of humour, otherwise you just wouldn't cope. That's cruel. <laughs> you wouldn't get through a day, you wouldn't get through a week. You've got to have a little bit of light relief, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so this is what you get when you send me out the in ice and snow and cold and wind and what have you. <laughs> Amy Barnsley. As the code red phone rings, it's clear the staff won't only be treating weather-related emergencies today. Cardiac arrest. OK, CPR in progress. OK, how long are you going to be? Ten minutes. Perfect. OK, we'll get research ready for you. They bring a chap in called Paul. Fine. He's 60. He's previously had a stroke. Okay. He was at a restaurant when he lost consciousness and suffered a cardiac arrest. Paramedics successfully restarted Paul's heart on the way to casualty. Ready, steady, move. The doctors first need to make sure he doesn't have another cardiac arrest. Just relax, relax. Put your head back and walk. I'll, I'll lead on. Oh, okay. Oh, oh no. Don't worry, just relax, just relax. So it looks like you've had a cardiac arrest. So your heart stops beating. Alright. But it's beating again now. Alright, we need to find out why this has happened. Just have a quick listen to your chest as well, so alright? Dr. Sebastian Peter is now leading Paul's treatment. I was born in Romania. Most of my training has been in Ireland for the past three and a half years. And now I'm here. Let's discover you up there. The Yorkshire people are quite, quite welcoming and very, very nice. And I am envisioning myself as working here for probably ever. It's all in keeping with, with the With Paul when his heart stopped was his wife Yvonne and neighbour Beatrice. And what's your understanding of what happened? We were in a cafe. Mm. It had his breakfast. Yeah. And then he just went into a daze. Oh. It was fine this morning. It was fine. We've just been married 30 years. So it's hard to stop for a, for a few minutes. We mean we did manage to restart it by giving him the shocks that the paramedics have administered to him. Now at the moment he's stable, which is good. We all do get emotional. I think it's part of our professionalism to hide that as best as we can, especially when we're 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 in front of the patients and their families. They need us to be a rock, not someone who breaks down. Did you get all that? I'm going to repeat it for you, is that all right? So what happened is when you were in the cafe earlier this morning, your heart stopped for some reason and you needed a few shocks that the paramedics have administered you to get you back. The patient's relatives do show a lot of resilience, a lot of strength when they're dealing with uh, a family members that require urgent, immediate treatment to save their lives. But I don't think the family or Paul were realizing how, how close he was of dying. Do you have any questions for me? I know it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. It is. Um, and, and, and He's here, and then he's all right. So that's that's the take-home message. Okay, thank you. Oh no! Oh, where are you? You're in hospital. Oh, because you weren't very well when we went out. All right. It's there. Oh. Where? Say the rope. Oh. Just trying to keep patients warm, so. Freezing fog in Barnsley means a day for slips, trips, and falls for the casualty team. Have you got a cane in, 
also means a tricky day for them to meet the NHS treatment target, to admit or send home patients within four hours. I'm just wondering if you can speak to their ops and see if we can get a similar down here. There's another two due in. One's just arrived. And it's and it just the time of year, it's just to be expected. It's an A&E department, isn't it? And that's what we're here for. But it's hard. Michael Flatley. I said Flatley. You get that, didn't you? Volunteer Jane may hold the most junior of positions, but that doesn't stop her from talking about anyone in the hospital, no matter what their rank. Obviously, one of our more good-looking consultants has been to Sainsbury's. When doctors bring in snacks, it's always appreciated. And besides that, you know, they're the ones that mainly eat it anyway. So they should bring them in, shouldn't they? <laughs> we all go to Asda and Morrison's. He goes to Sainsbury's to bring us some beautiful looking snacks. It might all be out of date, but don't worry about it. Don't look too closely. We will survive, unfortunately. In Bay 3, Anne's results are back from radiology. It's a very bad shoulder fracture. This is the result of the snow, the ice. It's really horrible. Um, spiral fracture of her um, mid shaft of her humerus, so might end up needing an operation. Um, but we'll have to sort of wait and see. So nasty. Yeah, definitely. It seems everyone's having a bit of a fall today. Yeah. Luckily, it's not, not us. us. <laughs> With all the usual areas full, Anne is taken to the paediatric resource bay to start her treatment. So have you had gas and air before? Yeah. So we're going to give you something a bit similar, okay. and we'll give you some of the morphine that you had earlier, yeah. OK? And hopefully that'll be enough to be able to... Teach you. Yeah, yeah, just to get us to get it into position more than anything. We can give them drugs through a drip, but it's always quite nice if we're able to just give them the sort of inhalation method, because um, there's obviously less risks attached for giving these drugs. But we'll start off, take good sort of 10 puffs, yeah. and then we'll sort of start trying to sit you up a little bit. And just every time you're feeling a bit of pain, I just want you to take a bit off it. All right. Say that again. <laughs> Will she be home for Emma Dale? Mm. I'm not sure if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I had quite a bad rake last year. Um, and actually, I had to get it operated on. Um, so I sampled a few of these drugs just before going for the operation, actually. Um, and. I didn't like I didn't like the feeling at all. Like you really felt quite woozy and not really in the same place. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how people find it quite funny. I think I was finding it quite terrifying, to be honest with you. Just fill all your lungs with it, OK? And you'll probably start to feel a bit woozy. What's your tipple? Gin and tonic? Gin and lemonade. There we go. So it'll be a few of those in a little while. <laughs> Keep buffering that. I'll cover this over as well and it gives you a bit more, okay? Well done. So we're going to see if we can put it in a, get you around a bit to start putting this Ooh. on. Yeah, right. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give yourself a little break. Oh, it's pretty good for making them quite woozy and some people do forget a bit more, so it makes them relax a bit too. It can make people very silly, yes. How's this feel? Try not to. Oh, trying to itch your eye. <laughs> what? Bit too many gin and lemonades again. Yeah. Well, now I think I feel better with gin and lemonade. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> that would really kill us out. That would really kill us out. That would really kill us out. That would really It's not just the elderly coming a cropper on the ice. The children's team are overrun with casualties too. Nurse Kate Ellis has been working in the department for 18 months. I got into nursing after my mum saw an advert for an apprenticeship at the hospital. I went to work on the children's ward as an apprentice and decided that that's what I wanted to do. Perfect to come this way. Heading to Bay 4 is seven-year-old Jensen. So my name's Kate, we're going to check some details, have a look at your bump, is that okay? 
there's always surprises in A&E. You never know what's going to come in the dark. Although it can be sad and it can be scary, it can be so lovely as well because they're just such funny little characters. And what have you done? I was playing football at school and then I slipped into my and then I managed to fall. And have you bumped your head? Yeah? And did you lose consciousness, Tom? And have you been sick? Oh, right, Jensen, come this way for me. You take your coat off for me. And then I want you to lay on this bed with your head at this end, OK? I'm going to give it a little clean, and then we're going to pop some little plasters on to pull it together, and a little bit of glue, OK? Just be a little bit sore, cos it'll be bruised, but not, the glue doesn't sting or anything, OK? I've never, ever had a phone call from school for them to come on. First, first one. This is the first day in the hospital. How old was he when he was jumping his push bike thing oh, off no, the wall actually, in the garden? He bit through his tongue when he was younger, actually, and we came to A&E and his tongue was hanging off. Still got a big scar on it, and his tongue from it. So are you trouble with a capital T? What are you going to do this afternoon now, then? I'm going to go on PlayStation. Go on your PlayStation. <laughs> he's lucky because he's not allowed on his PlayStation Monday to Thursday. Oh, are you not? Only on a weekend. It's the it on the right day. And I'm pooling, Mum. Yeah. That's what we're saying, isn't it? Mega brave, aren't you? Mm -hmm. What do you play on? Fortnite. Fortnite. So what do you do on Fortnite? Explain it to me. You just you get into a round and then you start killing people. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit up now, Jensen. Come on, easy. All done. Wow. So you need to keep that dry now for five days so you'll not have to get in bath either. <laughs> Are you sure? You like getting get in bath though, don't you? We can get in bath, but just up to here. What do you say, mate? All right, you're yeah, welcome. Let's get you a leaflet and then you can go. Nice and quick for you. Outside, and there's no let up in the weather conditions. Shall I get the tape? I think we're going to get quite a run of it today, aren't we? I feel like today, out there in the weather. Very, very, uh, it's smoggy. Um, driving conditions are quite reduced. Even though we've got lights on, I think they'll still find it difficult seeing us to move over to let us pass, so it's, uh, yeah. The fog not lifting at all? No, no, no it's uh, minus five as well at the minute. It's freezing, <laughs> so no, I need my gloves on. So, and bobbly hat. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's not too good out there. Battling the icy weather to start her shift is advanced nurse practitioner Cheryl Barnes. When I arrived, there, were, there was a man who'd been running on the, yeah. on the road out here and he'd gone yeah. down twice as I'd seen him. It was quite funny. And, and he went down twice, got up and went, it's very slippy. And I thought, why are you running on ice? <laughs> he was. When you work in an emergency department, it does make you more aware of ice. I always think of elderly people that for some reason have to go in their greenhouse on a icy day and water plants or take the bins out. You just don't want to be doing those things on an icy day. So you've been doing them falling over? Yeah. Falling down, flat on my back. I had him same this morning, going to Carlo, nine o'clock, straight over. Yeah. <laughs> 90 year old Barbara lives alone. So today, her neighbors are keeping an eye out for her. So Barbara went out to uh, bust him back in. She thought she was ballet dancing. Well, she went in the garage. She went to green. Come out, and I thought, too, I'll go out to some plants in greenhouse. Bang. I didn't know I was going down. And I come to an hour way through. <laughs> she thought it was raining. Yeah. So eventually, she rolled my wife up and uh, put things in motion. <laughs> That's what neighbours are for. Barbara, are you, are you all right on your feet? OK, we're going to go into that cubicle over there, OK? Are you together with this lady? Yeah. you want to come with me? You're very welcome. The ageing population now that we've got in Barnsley, they're really quite stoic and only come when they're proper sick. There we go. <laughs> and they'll say, you know, oh, I didn't want to put you out, you know, I know you're busy, and you think, yeah, but that's what we're here for. We're here for you, you know. We're here for exactly that. And my car, they do all <laughs> covered in blood at back. Oh, dear. So you've hit uh, your head good and hard then. So I, I've hit it hard because it hurts. Yeah. I particularly like 
seeing elderly patients. Um, I think it's an incredible position to be in. It makes me quite emotional because they are amazing. <clears throat> now then, has your tummy been okay? Yeah. You've not had any pain in your tummy or anything? No. It's not tender? No. No? Fine. Have you had any problems with your bowels or your waterworks recently? Well, I always used to have to take something to go. Okay. Now I have to take something to stop. <laughs> You have some great conversations with patients and you have a real good giggle with them sometimes. It's brilliant. Great sense of humour and I love looking after people like that. It's a great feeling. So I think we could get away with gluing it, look, because it's just that bit there, look, when I've looked. So I'm just going to glue that together like that. Now you've got a lovely coloured hair. It's, been... it's a bit of a it's new a trend, nice. that one. <laughs> Do I'll have a bit of blow up from. <laughs> Do you live on your own? Yes. Okay, so when we've had a head injury like this, we need to have somebody with us for 24 hours. Yeah. Because obviously things can progress later. And if you're on your own, that can be a bit of a problem, can't it? Yeah. You okay, love? Yeah. Not hurting you, Emma? It's sealing off. It's fine. We need to decide who can be with you. Yeah. Okay. If if there's nobody can be with you from now for 24 hours, what we'll do is we can we can keep you here for a little while, so we can organise that. I think I think some we all start with. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. That, okay. Okay. Can you hang fire here a bit? Yeah. I just make sure that my neighbour is safe when it's really icy. Keeping an eye on each other like that—that's quite Barnsley. Yeah. In Resus Bay 3, Dr Trimble is overseeing the treatment of Anne's fractured shoulder. I think this uh, right arm's going to be out of action for a bit, Anne. You know, we're only laughing at him this morning saying, ah, snow's coming. Like, we don't like snow. No. It got me last year, I broke my ankle because of it as well. Yeah, so I was off for like three months too, so I'm being extra careful this year. <laughs> can happen to anyone. I think I'm probably really, really sympathetic for these people because I've been there and um, I've, I've literally felt their pain. I've just come to see how you are. Well, I saw you when you first came in. I went, you walked down the grass bank. Uh, Why didn't you go down the pass? Yeah. <laughs> well done with you, I don't think I was a good patient at all. I wasn't great um, managing hospital. I couldn't sleep, surprise, surprise. Um, so I just wanted to home to my own bed, so I just wanted out the door. This is just the shoulder. Could have been something else as well. So it's not dislocated. Then. It's not dislocated, but it's a bad fracture. What have all this left of it here saying I bounce? But obviously <laughs> not. Uh, well, I'm, I'm dieting, I've lost a stun, and obviously I don't bounce them. <laughs> How's that felt, Don? Alright, give that to you and we'll go for x-ray. I'll go before and then we'll do after, like a grand reveal. That was it before? Yeah, yeah it's pretty... It's a good one. But we've managed to get it a little bit better. So it's more all in line now, which is important. Much straighter. So how long will it take it to you? About six to eight weeks. But if you imagine you're going to have lost by that time, you know, the muscles and everything yeah, that attach, yeah, so it's yeah. going to take a bit longer to build it back up. Yeah, so you'll probably just get back for Emmerdale. <laughs> All right. Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bye. Over in Resus Bay 2, Oh, you gave us a Yvonne and neighbour Beatrice are still concerned after seeing Paul collapse in the cafe. He tritted out for breakfast and then had his breakfast and everything and just collapsed. Oh, uh, this is your treat, Paul. We don't want them all. <laughs> By surviving a cardiac arrest away from the hospital, Paul has already beaten the odds. Patients that had a cardiac arrest, they're in a very fragile state and they're quite unstable and can have at any moment another arrest. So our main focus is basically to prevent them from having another arrest. Paul, oh, have you had any pain anywhere in your chest, in your tummy last couple of days? Been feeling your normal self otherwise? 
Have you got any pain anywhere now? In your tummy? Where's the pain? Is that sore? Yeah? Concerned about the ongoing chest and stomach pains, Dr. Siddiqui orders an x-ray. But Paul is still too poorly to be sent to the radiology department. So they come to him. The x-ray will show whether Paul has any broken ribs that may have occurred while paramedics successfully restarted his heart. The doctors are hoping it won't highlight something more serious. The freezing fog continues to cause problems for the staff at Barnsley Casualty. Hi there, can you put through to frail unit, please? But there's still over an hour nurse assessment wait. This is just, it's been an absolute nightmare. No matter how fast we work today, it's just not got on top of it at all. Volunteer Jane is trying to keep up with the effect that has on her housekeeping duties. Like gold dust, then. Them's worth more than gold, them pillars. And sometimes she could do with a helping hand. We've now got cups, empty cups, that need putting in the bin. So we've got bins, bins are clearly marked. But does people put the cups in the bin? No, they leave them on the table for somebody else to put them in the bin because it's obviously too hard to go like that and like that. But there's one group of staff who are immune to volunteer Jane's teasing. Your young doctor with blonde hair and glasses on. Uh, blonde hair, yes, this me. Glasses, yes. No, that's not you. You're not blonde. You're grey, sweetheart. Let's not, let's not try and think that you're any younger than what you are. I just love junior doctors to pieces. They are our future. Uh, and we need to invest in them. To me, the brilliant kids, you know, they, they've took the time and they're trying their best. Uh, and there's somebody's child when all said and done. But I do really like them. I, I do have a soft spot for some of the junior ones. Blonde hair glasses on. I watched him on Monday, teaching a young student. God, he was good. He took the time and the effort to teach him. Ask him questions, ask him to give the answers. Not, not him giving the answers, but wait for him to give. Excellent. Okay. And he said that you are his mentor. Because I asked, I said, who's your mentor? And he said, it were you. It goes from the top, isn't it? Well, that's what I thought. And then when he told me who his mentor was, I thought, well, obviously he's learned it from me and not <laughs> you. Well, thank you. Over in Resus Bay 2, Paul's X-ray results have shown no broken ribs. Monitoring his progress, is Sister Harriet Lindley. How did you meet? That's his wife. I'm just a neighbour. How did you meet Paul? His sister is a year older than me and his brother were in the same class as me at school. Oh. And my friend went out with one of his friends. How many years have you been married? Paul. Oh. Oh. How long have we been married? Oh. 30. Oh, he remembers. Down his points. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a very, very good memory. Whose birthday was it in November? Oh. How old were you? Oh, oh. 60. Wow. Where did you go for your birthday? Oh. On a cruise. Oh, On cruise. A cruise. Oh, I love cruising. Yeah. Have you got the cruise book? Yeah. <laughs> Although Paul has been responding well to treatment, Dr. Siddiqui is concerned by his latest test results. It's boring how to test. See if I get to his bit more. Paul has already survived two major cardiovascular traumas, and now doctors fear they have found a clot in his blood. He'll need immediate treatment. <laughs> Over by the hub, 90-year-old Barbara is now ready to go home, where she'll get looked after by her neighbour. It's not yet, but it's not back yet, so I've got to treat her to see you. Advanced nurse practitioner Cheryl has worked her way up to hold the most senior nursing role in the hub. 
she can now decide on the course of treatment for her patients. But a doctor must still discharge them. I've got a 90 year old lady that a little bit of lost consciousness after slipping on ice. She's not an anticoagulation, she's not vomiting, she's no amnesia, no red flags at all, I can't find anything at all. I've not done any bloods on this lady, she's well, well beforehand. So, I was going to send her home? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> Nurse Cheryl has been working in casualty for 12 years. But her route into nursing is quite different from most of her colleagues. I did used to be a trained dancer. A lot of the nursing staff won't know that. I went to the Northern School of Contemporary Dance in Leeds, which I absolutely loved. It was the most amazing time ever. And then very sadly, during the very last term of my three-year training, my left foot kind of packed in and wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. And I was really disappointed. But now I feel privileged to put my uniform on in the morning. It's an amazing feeling to be able to, to be there for somebody like that. That's the bit I like. Yeah. In Resus Bay 2, Sister Rachel Sheard is treating Paul's latest setback. One of your blood tests has come up, come back a bit raised. That suggests you might or may or may not be a little bit of a clot. Right. So for us to treat that, we need to give you some medication. Yeah. But for us to get the right dose for you, I need to know how much you weigh. All right, so let's get you up. All right, you're gonna feel stiff as boots. I'm probably be a bit, a bit so, excuse you. Despite being disorientated, the fact that Paul can move himself is a good sign. How are we did, Lynn? Yeah. Right, just sit there. Just sit there and get your bearings. Hang on. Everyone in before you can walk. Just hold on there. Where are you going? No, I don't want you to sit on that chair yet. I want you to just sit on the trolley for now, please. This is some scales. All right, then. When you're ready. All right, try and sit still for me, Paul. Did the doctors explain this is quite normal? Oh. Shall we get you back on this truck? Oh, they yeah, are brilliant. It's a good job we've got an NHS service, isn't it? On the other side of the unit, the broken bones just keep on coming. Went outside, the first few steps, there was no ice at all. So I just heading towards the car, and then the next the plaster, I just, I just slipped there and went down by the side of the car, like, on the, on the floor. Went back upstairs, I said, I've fallen down. <laughs> and then went very drip-like <laughs> and nearly fainted, so I sat her on the bed and I got up and got dressed and everything and started the panic button then. Dr Barath Reddy is examining 58-year-old Maxine's x-ray to assess the extent of the break. So it looks like she's had a simple mechanical fall uh, on the ice this morning. This is the second one for today. Uh, so hopefully when Dan is ready, we'll uh, get reduced. Before they can push Maxine's broken wrist back into shape, Dr. Buick administers some much needed pain relief. So first of all, we've got the cannula in, just to make you feel a bit drowsy, won't send you to sleep, and then we'll get you up to sleep. Okay. Once you've done that, we're going to give you a wrist to wiggle and get it into a better place. You know, it looks a bit more. Husband Mike is there to provide Maxine with oral support. I don't like needles. I'll be all right once it's done. People often say to me, oh, I don't like needles, and I think, oh, yeah, fair enough. I'd, I'd... I don't blame you. I, I wouldn't want a needle either. I stick the needles in all day, but I wouldn't want one in me. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I had someone, I was popping a needle in, and then his partner fell off the bed and then stumbled and sort of ran into the wall next to me. So I then had a second patient lying on the floor, and then the first patient started screaming, and my and it all just went a bit haywire from my initial just trying to put a needle in. Mm. 
Have they got the needle in yet? And two mils no. fentanyl, guys. Please, Please let's. The pain relief has kicked in for Maxine. Time to find out if her wrist bone can be put back into position. Maxine. Junior doctors George Kay and Miles Benjamin are starting their shift and know exactly what's in store for them this afternoon. Gonna see lots of falls, slips and... Oh, I know, we're just gonna get everyone falling over, tripping up. Ice is the enemy. When I wake up in the morning and see that, I'm all worried about myself because I've got really bad ballot. <laughs> It'll keep us busy in miners, won't it? Yeah, we keep going. I, I first of all have to be careful getting to work and then, then I can start to worry about what comes in. Hope for the bad weather will keep most other people out. <laughs> As a kid, I played a lot of rugby and with rugby, you're always getting injured, breaking bones. Um, I remember getting one really bad injury and at the time I wanted to be a rugby player. Um, so I went to the orthopedic surgeons and they were really nice and they helped me get over my injury, made me feel I want to be like you, basically. <laughs> um, so that's one of the reasons that I wanted to be a doctor. New recruit Dr Benjamin is still getting used to working at Barnsley Casualty. When you start a new job, you're a bit anxious, you know, it's a new environment. Hi Mavis, my name's Miles, I'm one of the A&E doctors. Nice to meet you. 80-year-old Mavis is the latest to join the list of slips, trips and falls this afternoon. I do always like seeing the little old ladies what caused you to fall? What caused me yeah, to fall? Yeah, yeah. Just the wet floor. OK. And coming from outside yeah. into inside. And do you, did you pass out? Sorry? Did you pass out? No, OK. Someone might have a hearing aid that they haven't brought with them and taken it out, so you end up just shouting, shouting at them for a, a few minutes. So I just need you to take big breaths in and out through your mouth, OK? Sorry? Can you take big breaths in and out through yeah. your mouth? But yeah, you, you, always, you always get through in the end. The thing what I'd like to do is just get a chest X-ray, just make sure um, everything's OK up there. Right. Great. Yeah. I like to explain everything. Yeah, perfect. Because we'll probably have to shout. Yeah, I'll OK. Shout. So I'll be back in a bit. I ain't got no makeup on today or all well, like that. You look fine. Huh? You look fine. So, so yeah. yeah. I'm very particular about my hair. No, I only well, had it done you know, yesterday. I know. It's, it's lovely. lovely. It's really lovely. Really lovely. <laughs> It lasts a full week, my uh... Maxine's broken wrist has been treated. She and husband Mike are now waiting to find out what happens next. It was cringe when you see the bone being manipulated back. You know, it... it... <laughs> Maxine. It felt very well. Uh, it's all gone back into place, we think. I'm uh, just going to send you for an X-ray and then see what we have done. Can you feel me touching there? Yes. And there? Yeah. Uh, 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 not really. No. Very quick. Rather than have Maxine waiting to have more treatment today, Dr Reddy has received the all clear to send her home. Right, she can go. Maxine will be back at the hospital in a few days, where she'll be treated as an outpatient. I think the position is acceptable for the moment. Definitely needs their in intervention at some point. I think there is going to be a bit, bit of a queue before the orthopedics can see you. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll let you go home today. Okay. But they will probably call you back at some point. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank see you later. Welcome. See you later. Over in Resus Bay 2, Paul is recovering well from his cardiac arrest. It's a relief for Yvonne and Beatrice. These two looks better, Yvonne, than what he did. Yeah. Oh, looking scary, isn't it? Oh, we shut Kathy down, didn't we? First time we've ever been there and all. 
Humor is probably important for the families because all the initial seriousness of getting down to business and fi fixing a really, really sick patient turns into more of a humorous situation when they're getting better. It's probably a reassurance to them that things are looking for the best. It was funny that when I was holding his hand and it pulled aside and then he just said to me, where's my wallet? Yeah. 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 That's his thing, his money. <laughs> yeah. He paid for breakfast anyway, so he could be paying any... <laughs> Bless him. Dr Peter has got to the bottom of why Paul's chest pains had continued, and it was nothing to do with his heart. I suspect that the pain that you're feeling at the moment, especially given the fact that it's mostly when you take a deep breath in, is probably from the chest compressions during the resuscitation that the paramedics have given you. Yeah. That, that caused a bit of trauma to your chest and a bit of a, the abdominal wall. It might be also the case that when, when they do CPR, they ventilate you with a balloon and mask. And when sometimes, when sometimes happens is that a lot of that air doesn't necessarily go into your lungs, it can go into your stomach and gullets as well. So you can be sick after that. Dr. Benjamin's examination has revealed no broken bones. For Mavis, it's a chance to give the newest doctor at Barnsley Casualty a history lesson. No, I used to work here. You used to work here. Years. Oh, I wow. worked here. Mainly on orthopedics. Yeah. Did a little time on uh, children's ward. Yeah, I did 25 years. 25 years. I got a long service award. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Barnsley, in terms of accents, is a bit different. I've always got to, like, sort of translate it in my head a bit, and then be <laughs> like, yep, yep, that, that's it. Well, I'm 80 now, so... Okay? And I worked while I was 65. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay, so you didn't want to stop? No, I didn't want to stop. No. I'd have gone on. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. go back tomorrow. Yeah, I really enjoyed orthopedics as I'm well. I'm fully compass now, yeah, so definitely. just spend your time, I think, to myself here. Yeah. I wish I were back there. Yeah. I think, I think I'm, I'll always be a London boy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've obviously got a bit of Yorkshire in me now. Thank you very much. Yes. Right, thank you very much. All right, so I'll be off then. Nice I'll be off then. Yeah, okay. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, yeah, OK. Take care. Yeah. Bye. 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 OK, then. Bye. <laughs> Just six hours since Paul collapsed in a cafe, his condition has improved dramatically. In Paul's case, the, the most striking thing of it was how well he was and how funny he was, despite the fact that probably not even an hour before arriving to the hospital, he had a cardiac arrest when you're dealing with a really, really sick patient that you feel that despite your best efforts, things are not going right and you know that the outcome is probably not gonna be the best when they rally and turn around, you cannot stop but be amazed. This is something that the books won't teach us, really. Paul was transferred to a cardiac ward where he had a stent fitted. Almost three weeks later, he was considered well enough to go home to his family. How are we doing? Fine. At last, the waiting list is down. Oh, it's not that bad, is it, to be honest? Uh, we're getting there. Good on, see ya. Staff are heading home. Bye. And the freezing fog has lifted. Time for a new shift to take over at Barnsley Casualty. Next time on Casualty 24-7... Hello, Cheryl speaking, Barnsley. Moped collided with car. Put a needle in there, Yeah, we've had all needles bounce on it. Who's bought all the love sweets for the staff? It were you, Henry Wayne. Hey, look, look at your face. Stings, isn't it? I hope I'm as glamorous as you at your age. Breathing. Breathe in. Attie Jake's all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, matron.